You're listening to Zoom the TBT with Charge and Hayner. Hey, it's George Harris at Zoom the TBT, and we're going to try to get the internet to work for this preview show because, frankly, West Virginia has dial-up quality stuff. Charge, are you hype about a big night of TBT basketball? Oh, yeah. I mean, we have an amazing triple header going on tonight, uh, starting in that uh, West Virginia regional. Can't go wrong when you have West Virginia on their home court. Uh, well, kind of their home court, their home state versus the Buccaneers, who's tough as nails. Over in Dayton, you got Jimmer and TMT taking on Red Scare, who's held a uh, uh, service out there in, in their own arena. Truly a home game. And then, of course, our first team is going to advance to the Final Four today with the Gutter Cat Gang versus Wichita. So, yeah, amazing triple header. Can't wait to dive in and uh, get to some interviews and dissect the matchups a little bit. Let's hope there are holes. We're going to get this pretty done pretty fast. So, first of all, let's look at the full bracket of where we're at. We're now the 10 remaining teams. I mean, it gets late rather fast in TBT. It's a wonderful festival of basketball. We got three games. On the right of that bracket, you'll see the West Virginia final with the Buccaneers and Best Virginia and the Dayton final with TMT and the Red Scare. And as an appetizer to the main event, you got the Gutter Cats, the NFT darlings, with running MVP Tyrese Rice against the Aftershocks with a little bit of home cooking. Charge, an exciting slate. Which game are you most excited to watch? Uh, I think the game I'm most excited for is going to be that TMT and Red Scare game. I think that one, um, you know, is going to be amazing. Uh, you got Jimmer Mania and uh, TMT at Red Scare. Obviously, I'm a big fan of uh, Scucci and uh, Trey Landers. And, and uh, th this is just really special that they've been able to go on a nice run on their home court. So I, I think uh, TMT may be a little stronger on paper, but will that Red Scare fan base push them over the edge and give them that emotion they need? to uh, uh, take the win, but either of the three games, you can't go wrong tonight. It is interesting because we talked in the first four pack of regions, the home cooking didn't work. A lot of home teams got crushed. Syracuse got crushed. And, uh, but the home cooking is held tight in this last four pack. We got three home teams playing tonight, which is pretty impressive. So we're going to see if neutral courts really do matter in TBT basketball. So now this is the West Virginia region. We're gonna start there and it's cooked up pretty much according to form. This tournament has been very chalky. Best Virginia with a dominating win over heard that last night in a testy but fun environment. And the Buccaneers came up early on war ready but were able to hold on. Now Charge, before we get into our analysis, we have a treat. ESPN's A team, Tim Scarborough and Matt Martucci joined us. Should we run that interview? Yeah, absolutely. They've been covering West Virginia, so who knows it better than those guys? Let's go to it right now. We got this interview of Matt and Tim coming up now. Hey, this is Zoom the TVT of Charge and Hayner. This is a big treat for us in anticipation of tonight's big showdown between the East Tennessee State University alums and Best Virginia. We have the gentleman calling the game, ESPN TVT's A team, Tim Scarborough and Matt Martucci. Gentlemen, what is going on this afternoon? What's it's going on? What's it's raining. On? It's raining. Yeah. It's raining. Yeah, it is really, really, really wet here. Oh, and it? Tim yeah. and, and Tim and Matt got that ESPN uh, hookup. So they're staying in a nice hotel with me. I'm I'm somewhere in South Central Charleston, just stuck in the rain. <laughs> but that's that's my that's my problem. So Tim, we'll go to you first, real quick. Um, what was the atmosphere like for that herd that Best Virginia game? Oh, really? Honestly, it was as good as I had heard. Uh, in the six years uh, Matt and I have been covering this this event. Of course, I haven't ever been to Wichita because, as you mentioned, we're the A team, but we're really kind of the C or the D team because they let Fran Fischilla and Dan Dockage and Seth Greenberg and every other ESPN employee go there and go other places. But we, we do okay for uh, – and I can't speak for Matt because he's a blue check on Twitter. I'm not even a blue check on Twitter. No, so. I'm not a blue I'm, check, I'm not a blue I'm check a on Twitter. Him. Oh, you're not. Okay. Nope. You need I'm to be. Not even, I'm to be. not even a blue check on Twitter. Everybody here needs to be a blue check. All three of us need to be blue checks. Uh, agreed. Agreed. <laughs> but no, the atmosphere was exceptional, honestly. Now, Matt, obviously, calling a game, you've called some of the biggest environments in college. Pro you've called some of the biggest environments in basketball. Does calling in front of that person a crowd change your call or give you more energy for your play-by-play? Yeah, I think you always feed off of off of a crowd. Any play by play announcer will tell you that it tends to be easier to, you know, to create your own energy and your own atmosphere when a building is full because the building more or less does it for you. Um, I think the the good thing about Scar and I doing this is as many years as we have, 
I, I think, you know, we've seen both ends of it where, you know, you've been in a gym like we saw last night where you have 4,500 people, which I, I think was the, the fifth largest TBT crowd in history, if, um, if, if I'm right. Um, and we've also been on the other end of that spectrum, you know, where you go to another site and, and nobody ends up, nobody ends up showing up in the first, you know, it was like the first two or three years we were doing this. Um, I can remember being in, in an empty gym, you know, in Memphis where we kind of had to, had to create our own energy and our own atmosphere. So, um, <laughs> all places you take. Yeah. You yeah. Memphis. Sorry, sorry, <laughs> Anner. Um, but yeah, I mean, the, the long answer to the question is, I, I, I think it have, obviously helps. It, it, it definitely helps, but, um, you know, there's, there's not an announcer out there or a color analyst out there that, that doesn't want to do a game in, in a, in a completely full building. Um, so that, that was awesome last night. Looking forward to more of it tonight. Now, obviously full building should be pretty full tonight too, obviously, because the, the big dogs did win West Virginia as the alum won. Tim, how do you see this matchup playing out? Two really aggressive, physical teams. What's going to be some keys you're looking for as an analyst to call tonight? Well, you know, for, for me, that Buccaneers team is, is extremely skilled and, and they're scrappy. So they kind of remind me of that blue collar U team that went deep last year. They went to the semifinals. I felt like this Buccaneers team could have gone to the semifinals or, or even deeper last year. With, um, if, and if they had uh, a little shot at the, at the basket versus sideline cancer, that goes in and the tip in from Toyo goes in. And we, we might have watched that team go pretty far too. Um, having said that, you know, Marcus Keene had other ideas for sideline, came out and hit a 40 footer. But that's, that's what uh, TBT basketball is, right? It's you have to close the deal. You know, you can have as big a lead as you want, but you still need eight points at the end of the game. And sometimes teams struggle to get that eight points. That, but that's, that's what makes TBT and Elam ending separate from every other type of basketball we watch. And the drama is always there. And, and the crowd always stays because they have to see their team actually close the deal. So it's, it's just brilliant. But I would say this, this uh, bucket nearest team is probably better than the best Virginia team. The question is, can they maintain their composure? They wilted a little bit last night. Uh, they had three turnovers for the whole game pretty much. And then when war ready made their run, they turned it over six times in three minutes and they went from a double digit lead to a two point lead. You can't do that. So if they take care of the basketball, like I know they can, and War Ready's defense is nowhere near as physical as a Bob Huggins <laughs> graduates, grown men, you know, taller, bigger, longer, stronger. I mean, those guys are going to come at them tonight. So they better be ready. There's a big physical difference in the teams between Hurd and Best last night. Because the thing is, you looked at them, and you could tell, like, both teams were full of good basketball teams, but one team had a slightly different attitude about the weight room and that physically was apparent in their bodies now matt you've called major college events you, you do this for a living you call st joe's you're the voice of philadelphia basketball in many ways what what makes calling a tv game so interesting is it the elam is it the general ethos of it being professionals playing one and done is it playing the alumni teams coming back to play for the jersey what what makes it such an interesting event to call uh two things for me the first is the intensity uh, and anybody that walks into this thing for the first time with a first time team, I think if you ask them what tends to surprise them about this event, it's always the intensity. The fact that there are this many guys that are basically getting nothing for their first five games. And then there's one team that's, that's still getting nothing in their sixth game. <laughs> um, you know, and you, you hi, Mike. You, yeah, yeah, <laughs> like, yeah, like. <laughs> Poor Michael. Twice. Uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah. You, like you walk, you walk away with nothing. Um, if you're, you're 63 of these teams uh, with, you know, with some exceptions. Um, but for the most part, most of these guys are not, not getting paid to do this. So um, the fact that there is this much intensity, you know, for, for that, that six game run um, kind of gives you March Madness type of vibes, which, which number one, I love. Uh, and number two, it's the walk down college basketball memory lane. I think that that was what made this so appealing for, for both Scar and I in the beginning is that we're, we're more or less hoops junkies. And I, I think more so college hoops than NBA junkies yeah. where you wonder with, with some of these guys, what happened to this guy? I can remember uh, playing in Philadelphia in the Jamboree the first year uh, where I think Josh Boone from UConn was, was on one of the teams where I 
I kind of wondered, you know, what corner of the world Josh Boone had ended up in um, and, and where he was playing in Europe. And that's that's the cool thing about this. I think for a lot of people, it answers all the unanswered questions about, you know, where did so-and-so end up? Um, Eric Diebendorf was a couple of years behind me at Syracuse. It was cool for me, you know, watching Devo more or less get to play in this thing for, for the past six years or, or whatever it was before he ended up joining their coaching staff. Um, because it, it kind of brought me down, to, yeah, brought me cool. back to, you know, to younger, uh, you know, younger days, uh, which, which was pretty cool. And you saw that Devo started his coaching career in style. He, he had a win in his first game assistant. Of course, he got a T, so he actually just did the entire <laughs> thing already. He already has a technical, which is amazing. Expected, though, Devo, right? Yeah, Devo, yeah, I think most pretty people know, guy. Yeah, most people <laughs> that know what Devo was like as a player will, will yeah. tell you that's, that's kind of par for the course. My, my first memory of TBT watching it in person is we went down to Philadelphia and we saw them beat 20th and only. I think Devendorf tried to fight the entire team at one point, which was just like, and I was like, I love this event. This event is everything you want out of a game. High level basketball intensity and the hint, but not the execution of a fist fight. By the way, I uh, think we lost and screwing us. That's fine. Our crap, you know, it's, it's nature of our thing. The internet's unstable. Actually, that might be a good time to end it before the internet completely cops out. Tim, closing thought. Yeah, well, I just want more people to start watching TBT and to really get a feel for the excitement, the energy, the enthusiasm, the drama that TBT brings. So um, the casual fan is starting to watch, I think, uh, but but we need more of those. The, the basketball junkie is absolutely tuned in because whenever I – go on social show and say, hey, watch my game tonight. All the same people are like, oh, man, I, I'm watching your games. I'm watching the other games. And that's what we do. We, we As soon as we get off the air, we go, can't wait to see those other regions. We're going to so do it we, tonight. We, we, yeah, we we're, we're going to do it tonight. Yeah, right absolutely. after the call. So, right after the call, yeah. So I just want more people to just get exposed to this, try it out. I mean, I, I sound like a drug dealer right now, right? <laughs> try it out. It's my hair. Try. First one, you a taste, got to pay try. for the rest. Try the product. <laughs> Ever get yeah. high off your own supply, as Biggie would say. <laughs> Tim right. Scarborough, Matt Martucci, they're on call tonight. They are superstars. Thanks for coming by. All right, now. Thanks. Bye now. We always love having Tim and Matt on, man. Aren't they? It's great to have those guys on, right? Yeah, no, they're, like I said, uh, I mean, they're just so passionate about TBT. And, uh, you know, they do an amazing job on the calls uh, for ESPN. But uh, those are two guys that just love, live, breathe TBT. So fun, fun group of guys and very knowledgeable. Now, you enjoyed, you've only been able to make one game, which is unfortunate due to work commitments. But you enjoyed last night because you were with them. What was the environment like sitting courtside in West Virginia? Yeah, it's uh, kind of sad. Yeah, and uh, even talking to Josh yesterday, this is a record low for me. I've only been to two games, so one one session, two games, but it was crazy in there yesterday. Even that uh, appetizer with uh, War Ready and uh, Buccaneers had a nice crowd filing in pretty early. Uh, but the best Virginia crowd really, really shows up. They showed up last year, had a little bit of an early exit, but that place is going to be crazy today. Uh, they were loud. They were fun. They got their mascot. They got their band. I mean, we had uh, people up in the upper decks, which we've yet to see uh, in West Virginia. So for them to be able to pack up that many fans uh, tonight's going to be even stronger. But uh, it was it was loud. It was fun. And uh, Buccaneers, they, they love, you know, kind of being a little bit of the underdog and uh, things got a little chippy. They held out. They got a lot of uh, grit. So it's going to be a great matchup. And a requiem for the the departed. Uh, heard that uh, did not shoot well. At one point, they were four of twenty three from three, which means John Flowers at one point was out shooting them from three. Uh, in fact, he credited his shooting with the Tudor's Biscuit World he had before, which is a <laughs> terrible pregame meal because it's basically carb overload and it's why i've had a tutor's biscuit it's the size of a house so i'm shocked he's able to shoot any shots much less make them but i guess i guess he's gonna have to eat one tonight so heard that came back and tried to at the end uh war ready a, a minor story for getting to the final uh they were not a viable team anymore they needed a win in the worst way in fact one loss probably doomed their program but only they get the one win they need to stay viable they really showed up and came back at East Tennessee. So they really deserve a lot of respect for their tournament run, correct? 
Yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, hats off to them. And, and they were obviously shorthanded for a number of reasons, personal reasons, injuries. Um, and so they they came in shorthanded, didn't have a deep bench. And some of the people who did not show, uh, you know, would have been key players uh, on that roster. So it just shows these guys are just a couple pieces away from being legit, legit contenders. Throw those past two years out the window. And this, this is the war ready you should expect year in, year out. Oh, no, you, you went through. You heard it on your end, right? So I guess we won't recut this. We'll just let the mistakes roll. I'm not going to sit here and freak out about that. We're low on time. That's the nature of the show, baby. Internet's dial up. <laughs> okay, let's get into the matchup before the internet dies on us. So real quick, looking at this one versus two matchup, against it's whole, obviously, um, really balanced scoring out of best Virginia. They shot really well yesterday. How are they going to handle the defensive pressure of East Tennessee alums, though? Yeah, I mean, obviously, uh, they're going to bring it to Buccaneers. That's what they're known for, getting after it hard. But these guys have played together for, for years now, and uh, they, they were just well-oiled machine, really moving the ball, uh, great communication. They got a, a ton of guards that can get the job done and facilitate. And then, obviously, Kevin Jones and uh, 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 John Flowers just hitting big shots uh, all tournament long. So, uh, you know, it's going to be one of those ones. They're prepared, and they'll, they'll be able to handle it. But once again, uh, on the Buccaneers side, DeSante Bradford, continues uh, to star and then they, they they've got a good supporting cast who know their roles who can get after it they can get physical and uh you know this is a never quit never die uh, buccaneers team yeah really could be a solid matchup what's your pick here yeah i picked it from the beginning i've said from day one of our bracketology that this is the best the best best Virginia team that they've ever put together. I did originally pick them to win this uh, bracket, so I'm going to stick with them. And if they shoot anywhere close to as well as they did yesterday, they they should pull this game out. They scored 23 points in five minutes to start out the second quarter yesterday, and that obviously was – kind of the dagger that uh, heard that face, even though they gave that good fight and made a good run towards the end. That was, that was just brutal. And so I think uh, best Virginia is going to be amped up and uh, pull this one off. Definitely. 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 Okay. So we're going to move on to our next match. Oh, yeah, I didn't get my prediction. I made you make one, by the way, I'm also going to go with best Virginia. When we started the brackets, I picked Woco Showtime, which shows exactly how much I know about this stuff. So I have a free pick. I'm already wrong once. Let's not make it twice. I think East Tennessee is their equal. I think they're a wonderful team. The Buccaneers come to play. They're a rough and ready team, but in an even matchup, which I feel this is the crowd does matter. And I really think best Virginia's crowd will carry them. That, that's a well, couple of points they're going to need. So I really see this being a best Virginia win. So we're on the same page here. Let's All keep right. it rolling. So Dayton, which by the way, it's looking likely that we will, well, not we, I will be going to Dayton. It looks like it's not hundred percent sure, but it's at 90% now. I will be hitching a ride from here tomorrow to go cover a little bit of the Dayton region, which will be a lot of fun if we can make it. Um, the money team, not all expected. Jimmer's got box office is great score. Red scare, slight underdog, but again, the home cooking. Before we get into the matchup, though, we saw a lot of posts from the coaching staff and players. It looks like this is it for the Golden Eagles. Yeah, that was it was kind of a bittersweet day yesterday. A lot of, uh, you know, excitement with the games, but uh, Golden Eagles, um, you know, pretty much the coach and most of their players said that this is the end of an era. And obviously they they probably one of the most storied franchises in uh, TBT history. Um, then obviously um, Ott uh, rode into the sunset, uh, really made uh, heard that an amazing brand. And so unknown if they'll come back again next year. Now we've heard from a couple other teams that already stated that they're most likely not going to be able to come back and you know obviously there's always people willing to come in and, and play and put some teams in so uh it's kind of kind of uh, at the same time a lot of fun yesterday but uh when you see teams like golden eagles dropping out and uh, dropping out uh you know obviously they're uh have their reasons for doing that but uh tbt will continue but it just won't be the same without those two it really won't uh get into the specific matchup and again the narrative again the home cooking i mean having it on their home floor again the first couple regions really crushed TBT. They did not get the home cooking. They did not get the home gates. The second week has delivered these home gates and these home teams, though. The Red Scare looked really, really good in a tight win last night. And the Money team had some troubles early up. A very game men of Mackey, but they're able to come behind. I mean, in his comeback to TBT, Jimmer Fredette has been as advertised having a guy playing 34 minutes a game by the way which is a pretty heavy load in tbt uh do you think there's anybody in the red scare that's going to be able to slow down jimmer 
Yeah, I mean, that's that's a tough task. And, uh, you know, we, we haven't seen a ton of Trey Landers recently. And obviously he was uh, one of the TBT's defensive uh, players. Uh, I can't remember if it was of the year or, you know, all defensive team, whatever they, they named. Uh, Trey Landers has a history of playing some uh, some people really, really tough. So we may see a little bit uh, more Trey Landers today getting after it. Uh, uh, but uh, obviously Jimmer's going to do Jimmer things. He had a, I guess we call it an off night yesterday, only scored 20. Uh, I mean, the guys historically, uh, putting up 30 points a game in the, the TBT. So I, I don't think anyone can stop Jimmer. It's more is anyone going to be able to contain Jimmer for uh, a little bit. But, uh, you know, this may be the game that uh, Trey Landers gets a little bit of a bigger role. We'll talk a little bit about your boy Scoochie Smith's impact in his first TBT. Yeah, no, it's been it's been fun uh, watching those guys play. And so obviously we knew Scoochie was going to be uh, highly involved uh, uh, with the team facilitating, uh, you know, making some big shots, uh, some nice drives to the lane yesterday. But um, obviously, you know, you've seen him on social and some of the TBT retweets, uh, just having a good time running his camps before. And uh, so it's lived up to every bit of the, the hype that's out there. And, you know, they got a nice big three there with uh, Jordan Cybers, uh played some really nice game, hit some big shots uh, yesterday, knocking down some threes. Daryl Davis been, it seems like been playing in TBT forever now since Red Scare is kind of a, a fixture. But they, they got a, a solid team and a, a fun team. Team, but uh, yeah, Scucci's uh, delivered everything and more that uh, I think the, the team expected. Now, I will say this one thing TMT has to get I keep saying, well, I say Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, so I do TMT. It's just screwing <laughs> me. Jordan Crawford has not really been a factor yet offensively. A lot of his shots have gone to Fredette. I think if they're going to win this game, they're going to need a little bit more out of Crawford, I think, actually. He's a star in his own right. He's, maybe he's deferring a little much these stats show. I think Jordan Crawford really can go off in this game if they're going to win. Charger prediction. Yeah, I think, uh, you know, TMT is just too deep. So when you're looking at guys like uh, Jimmer Fredette, you're looking at guys like Jordan Crawford. I mean, you got some some big dudes like Trevor Booker and Jeremy Evans played his first game last game, so they added him. So Trevor Thompson is going to have a load in front of him uh, trying to handle uh, some of those guys. And then obviously Mitchell Creek can do a little bit of uh, uh, everything. I mean, that was a solid, solid ad that they made uh, right before the deadline to get uh, Mitchell Creek uh, uh, in there. So I just think the, the depth and the size of TMT is going to be a little too much for Red Scare tonight, uh, despite the home crowd. This is one uh, same thing. I picked TMT in my bracket from the beginning, so uh, not wavering there. This is one I kind of hope Red Scare wins, uh, you know, from a, a personal side. Uh, like I said, uh, a lot of people, you know, interact with on uh, social media. Uh, we're charged fans because we've had a lot of uh, Dayton guys come through. Love it for the community. Love the fan base there. So I'm, I'm kind of hoping Red Scare proves me wrong, but I think uh, TMT is just a little too deep and a little too big uh, for those guys to hang up tonight. Makes sense. Okay, I'll make the same prediction. I think the crowd will will help the Red Scare. They're obviously a talented team. They've gone deep in this tournament before. They're more than capable of winning this game because of their talent, their cohesion, what they're playing for. But I'm going to go with the money team due to just the, the overwhelming talent. Red Scare is a talented, tough team, but the money team is basically a TBT all-star team. And I think in this case, talent's going to win out. But again, I'm also kind of hoping it's wrong because the Red Scare are a fun bunch of guys. So again, another close game. And I think the home team won't quite do enough uh, in this one, but the home crowd in Dayton's amazing. So if one crowd's going to bring it, Dayton guys might just be enough. Okay, one more game tonight, and we are actually going to the regional quarters now. We're starting to have these games be in the regional quarters, and we're going to go ahead. What's an interesting quirk in TBT is they gave a regional quarterfinal game to Wichita, and hopefully, I we don't know for sure, but we're guessing part of it's due to the gate and the gate, as we say, the bag was secured. The aftershocks were able to escape the region and get one more home against a very good Cutter Cats team. Now, before we get into our analysis, um, we have Zach Bush for a little bit, who is the head coach and GM of Aftershocks. We should go ahead and run that, right? Yeah, absolutely. Obviously, Zach's done an amazing job over there at the Aftershocks, been on the show uh, the past couple of years. So, obviously, let, let's hear what he's got to say about his team. Zach talking about the Shocks. This is Charge Arabs at Zoom to TBT, and we have the honor right before tip of tonight's first final. Actually, let me start over. Let me try that again. Hang on. Sorry. You guys, it's no, the, you guys are playing. Those are the first, this is the first national quarterfinal. Yes, quarterfinal. Got it. Yep. Okay. We're the okay, sorry. Yep. okay, got it. One second. The hand thing is to make sure I know to start from there. Yep. Okay. Hey, it's Charge Arabs at Zoom to TBT, and we are here with 
head coach and GM of the Aftershocks, Zach Bush. How are you doing this afternoon? I'm doing good. I got a little bit of a headache here from preparing for uh, the Gutter Cats and doing about a million different things at once, but uh, ready to go for tonight. Now, the Gutter Cats present a pretty interesting challenge because obviously they have the reigning MVP in Tyrese Rice. So, I mean, game plan number one is stop Rice, correct? Yeah, obviously. Um, anytime you play a team with Tyrese Rice, um, I think that's everybody's game plan. Most aren't able to accomplish it. It's easier said than done, but um, we feel like we've prepared pretty well. And, um, you know, hopefully we can slow him down just enough to, to give us a chance and, you know, exactly limit everybody else from from going nuts. But uh, at the same time, we like who we are. You know, we we really defend well. We you know, when we watch these other games, we def we feel like we defend at a pretty high level, um, even just energy wise compared to some other regionals. Now, are you anticipating Kyle Hines making an appearance tonight? I sure hope not. That's a big old dude down there. And, uh, you know, we've got um, James Dickey, who's another UNCG guy. Um, James knows him. And I think those are kind of the two, you know, most highly thought of big men to ever come out of UNCG. So um, I hope he doesn't put a jersey on. But if he does, uh, you better box him out. Yeah, definitely. Definitely. He, he presents a real problem on the glass. Um, you, the scheduling for TBT is there's two regional final sites, which we're actually in Charleston right now covering that one. Um, Wichita has the oddity where they get an extra game, uh, maybe for gate reasons, maybe because you're just such charming and nice people. But being able to play a national TBT quarterfinal at home has got to be a bit of a bump, correct? Especially when that home is in front of some insane shocker stuff. Yeah, obviously, um, we love getting to host it. It, uh, you know, probably presents a little bit of an advantage, but at the same time, it doesn't seem like anybody's had trouble coming in here and uh, scoring and shooting lights out. So I don't know if it's too much of an advantage. You know, these guys are pros now, so um, the crowd doesn't affect the game quite as much as it probably did in college. But, um, you know, I think they love the fans here in Wichita, just really love and appreciate good basketball. So I think TBT notices that and, you know, knows how many people will come out. So just a cool opportunity, I think, to, to have another game outside of Dayton. But obviously Dayton is a is another fantastic venue. And you saw their crowds last night in their games, um, you know, just really two special basketball places that I think is fun, you know, in the summertime to get some notoriety and get some love. Yeah, it's interesting because I know TBT likes to rotate the regions a bit because of gate and also keeping it novel. But it's going to be very hard to leave Wichita because they released the attendance numbers. And as of last night, I know that has changed because uh, Charleston just entered the list at number five. But before Charleston last night, the most recent top five attendances were all in your building, which has got to be pretty impressive. So how proud are you of your community showing up so well for this event? extremely proud you know this this community kind of has a chip on their shoulder it's um, you know a blue collar city people that work really hard you know it's not a city that people you know think of as being a, a big sports town but people love basketball in this community especially when it's played at a high level they're intelligent basketball fans you know they appreciate when the game's played the right way they love energy love defense and so we love that you know we kind of get to put them on a national stage and and show out and show what this community is all about so we take a lot of pride in that you know we love to kind of brag and talk about we have the best you know fans and home court in tbt and that there's nothing really quite like it you know this year our numbers have been down compared to what they were in the past but still if you look at the top 10 you know attendance list we're still cracking those lists this year and you know hopefully we can keep this thing going in the future now Three down, possibly three to go. Have you already mentally spent your money? Say that again. Have you already mentally spent your money? <laughs> mentally, I know exactly what my money's going to. I was a walk-on, so I've got some student loans waiting for me. So ah. I've enjoyed this little pause here. So I know, you know, I think we're all split it evenly. So it's around 71000 a piece. So I know whatever it is, 38, 40000 boom, right to that. Then after that, put a little away, um, you know, but that's the first thing that's getting spent. Okay, shout, shout out to Sally May, Naviet, and all those nice people, the loans. Yeah, I've got, I, I just actually paid my for the so, What are you excited about the time? Hold on, I lost you there. Say that again, please. Oh. Any last words, like before we let you go to prepare last bits? It's going to be a tough game, but we're ready to go. Um, we're fighting for respect, man. We still we still feel like underdogs. You know, we've, we've won some games. We're, you know, back-to-back -back quarterfinal appearances these last two years. But, you know, we watch your guys' show. We see what uh, Joey Lane and those guys put out on Inside the TVT. So we still play uh, with a chip on our shoulder. And 
it's going to be tough. We're, we're down a couple guys tonight. Tyrus McGee, unfortunately, had to leave to get ready to go to China. Um, big got some loss. Guys. Big loss. Yeah, yeah, huge um, loss there. Um, but, you know, we still play with a chip on our shoulder, and we're, we're still trying to earn respect in this tournament, and uh, we just have fun with it. Well, you guys haven't had to tackle anybody on an inbounds play this time, so hopefully that hasn't happened. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. That was that was that was not a foul. But hey, these things happen. You know, it's how life works. Hey, okay, different Zach, different angles show different things on that play. I don't know. It's a layup, and hey, it is how it is. It is what it is. On that note, GM head coach of the aftershocks, Zach Bush. Thanks for joining us tonight. Good luck tonight. Thank you. See ya. Great to have Zach on. Always a great guest. Really appreciate his time, especially on game day. He came on just a few hours ago. Um, again, he laughed about it. I asked him if Hines going to play. It's like, I hope not. You know, basically, like, I hope he's not playing. Uh, this is going to be a real factor about having to box him out. Um, you had mentioned that Kyle Hines, even though he's one of the greatest players in European history, might present maybe a chemistry problem coming in late. I said because it's such a defensive stalwart and covers up place, it might not matter as much. How, but either way, how much of a factor would Kyle Hines be in this game if he plays? Yeah, I, I just think the, um, the the overall morale of the team goes higher. He's the namesake of this team. Uh, he's, uh, I mean, all Euroleague legend over there. Uh, so just his presence on the court and the leadership on his court, not only from uh, sitting and uh, kind of taking a little bit of a uh, coaching role, but all signs point to him playing. Uh, the folks uh, that I talked to say he's playing TBT on their update, did not mention uh, Kyle Hines is out, so every sign points to Kyle Hines playing uh, tonight. But uh, you know uh, how they use him uh, undetermined. You know, obviously something put him out for a couple games, whether uh, just rest or uh, some rehab. So they may, you know, just use it for you know just uh, some some spurts, give him some minutes as needed, or who, who knows, he could be full go. But either way, I think it's just a nice boost for them uh, uh, from a confidence standpoint. Uh, but when you got Tyrese Rice, QJ Peterson, I don't know how much more you need. Will Cherry's been great defense. Uh, for those guys uh, so it's it's a tough tough gutter cat gang so uh, we'll see how it plays out but I, I'd expect Hines to, to make a, an appearance and Rice and Peterson have been a great one-two punch you expect that from Rice the reigning MVP of TBT Peterson's a bit of a surprise being this good but he's been legit too so they have a great one-two punch even without Hines so even without Hines this will be a tight game now the aftershocks show a really 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 balanced scoring really balanced a lot of work but it looks like Tyrus McGee is not playing. And you had mentioned to me that's going to be a factor. Yeah, and uh, like I said, it, he hasn't been having his uh, best TBT, but he has knocked down some shots, uh, you know, as needed and in, in the clutch. And uh, so I, I think that's one as well, uh, you know, the depth behind him as, as you start to remove players, remove starters, you're going to go a little bit deeper into the bench that, uh, you know, they probably weren't anticipating. So, um, yeah, I think it's going to be a big factor. He can go off at any time, but they won't have that uh, uh, opportunity. So hopefully, you know, Frank Camp uh, comes out and does the things he normally does and uh, just starts not knocking down shots, gets hot early, and uh, kind of carries his team. And you can see uh, Daryl Willis has been big for them, uh, almost nine rebounds uh, per game, uh, almost a double-double per game. So he's been been solid. But uh, once again, he's going to have his uh, work cut out for him between Odiasi and, and Hines, assuming he gets uh, some really good runs in there. So it, it's going to be a fun game. But, uh, yeah, I think the McGee uh, piece definitely hurts them. Okay, prediction charge. Prediction. Yeah, uh, man, I, it feels like I just keep picking against aftershocks every single year, every single round, every every opportunity I get. And they they just uh, make me look so bad. So so why change that? Um, obviously, love gutter cat gangs. I'm going to go going to go going to go with the gang gang and uh, see if they can't pull off a win tonight. But you mentioned Tyrese Rice uh, reigning MVP. QJ Peterson is one of the best players no one ever heard of. Uh, you know, talked about him last year in, in some podcast when he was a free he's just like man someone's got to get a steal and grab this guy uh but they they roll pretty deep with some good role players as well and with the Heinz back uh I think that's what's gonna take to put him over the edge be the x factor and no matter what his role is and uh push gutter cat over the gang despite the hostile aftershocks crowd yeah I really hate the amount we're agreeing to be honest with you it's really disturbing but I'm also going to go with gang gang uh I think even without Heinz if you have enough with Heinz it could be pretty dominant and since we have both always we both always pick against aftershocks there's absolutely no reason we're both both picking against them again they won't win this game so we both think they're gonna lose which means if you're watching this show and you haven't put money down yet if we think they're gonna lose put the bank on them because we are idiots when it comes to picking aftershocks games Yep, yep. Okay, Good charge. Luck. We're wrong. Let's get this over with. Any last thoughts? No, uh, yeah, been an exciting uh, 
tournament so far like you said down to 10 teams we're going to get a final four tonight and uh it's going to be another, another exciting night of basketball and elam ending some of those slingshots are going to come right down to the next basket win so can't wait can't wait charge thanks for swimming by it was great to see you too to the, to, uh, today and yesterday actually so yeah, sorry we'll see a good time. i'm glad i was able to finally make one but uh keep holding it down uh, doing a great job with uh zoom to tv next account. year more ne next year so. more i hope okay so. it's, it's been this, this has been Charge Hand represent Zoom the TV here for our regional final preview of West Virginia and Dayton. And we are, as always, signing off. Hope you enjoyed listening to Zoom the TBT with Charge and Hainer. Subscribe to YouTube, follow on Twitter, and give us your money.